Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. Today I want to look at a Connor Watson painting and I came across Connor's work a while back when I was doing some research on the harmonic armature and I came across an article and he was demonstrating how he uses it in his paintings and I love his work. So I thought I would look at one today. And before I get into that, though, I thought I would just mention a few updates. I've decided to bring back some of my old videos that I created under the Dynamic Symmetry Art label to help photographers because I've been getting a good amount of questions from photographers about dynamic symmetry and how to apply it and so on. And I just felt I it, I felt there were some good videos that I have done in the past that might help them. So you can find them on my homepage if you go down to the bottom of the menu bar. It's under archived videos. In the videos, there's a section where it says help support dynamic symmetry art. I don't take donations anymore. This website is a non-commercial site and I don't take donations and I don't sell any products. But it's important to understand when you're talking about dynamic symmetry. There's a lot of junk science out there or what I call junk science. It's information that has not been verified to any great extent. And I see this a lot with dynamic symmetry. One of the articles that I came across a while back was, it was a series of videos supposedly proving that Cartier Brisson used dynamic symmetry. And the video wasn't proof at all. It was from a page from the book, The Decisive Moment. And if you understand design and you take the time to do a little bit of research, you'll discover that that's not proof at all. And I created a video based on that. I stumbled on an article where the same photographer is coming back now and saying, well, it really doesn't matter whether or not he's using dynamic symmetry. But, but again, see, you're missing the point. If you're going to come out and make these claims when it comes to this information and then you retract what you said because somebody proves you wrong, it just, it just makes the point clear that you really have to take the time to verify some of this information that you put out there. And I'm not talking about being perfect because I'm far from perfect when it comes to some of this information. But I do go out of my way not to make claims that I can't verify. For example, stating that Cartier Brisson uses dynamic symmetry in the sense that, you know, this is proof. It's, that's very difficult to prove. Because there's really nothing out there that would lead to that proof. Now you can use the 1.5 armature and analyze some of his work. And I've talked about that. And I do do that in some of my own work. But the 1.5 armature is not dynamic symmetry. It's not a dynamic symmetry rectangle. And in order to bring the 1.5 into dynamic symmetry, you have to overlap root 4s and I learned that from Myron Barnstone when I went down to visit him. And it's interesting because I remember the visit. I was sitting down with him and he was taking tracing paper of Route 4s and laying it over some of his photographs, Brazans. And even at the time, I was like, no. <laughs> Photographers don't think this way. I've been a photographer for a long time and there's just no way Brazan was doing that. So I don't buy that. And even though... You can overlap root fours to bring it into dynamic symmetry. Photographers will never do that. And I created a video explaining that. To accurately apply dynamic symmetry in photography, you have to crop your photographs unless you're shooting in a square. And I do have a video on that called, called How to Accurately Apply Dyna Dynamic Symmetry. All right, so let me take a look at this painting and just point out a few things. The first thing I noticed is that there's a circular element going on here, and let me show you what I mean. I can draw a circle in this square. I believe it's almost a square. We're very close to it anyway. If I draw a circle, at this point, let me straighten that out a little bit. There we go. And I can bring it down a little bit. You can see the circular element coming into play here. It's pretty obvious. When you drop the harmonic armature on this painting, however, you'll see how Connor's using many of the diagonal lines, and let me show you what I mean by that. 
All right, here's the painting with the harmonic armature drawn on top of it. And let me outline a few things here. And I'm going to change this to solidify that line and change it, I think, to yellow today so it stands out. Let's try a yellow. There we go. All right, so you have many of these diagonal lines being played out here. For example, you have this one. You have this figure leaning on this diagonal line here. You have this diagonal line here in the tricep area, and then you have this one here following the path of this element right in here. So you have this going on. You also have this figure angled on this diagonal line. You have a vertical coming straight down that is emphasized there. You have this diagonal line enclosing the back area at that point. You also have this diagonal line and this figure leaning into that as well. So it's really obvious. If I extend this diagonal line down though, it picks up this arm element here and then you have this diagonal line being played out in this angle here and it goes all the way down to this point. Now of course I can drop a horizontal line right here that picks up this element in this arm right there. So you can see how this is coming together. You also have this diagonal line being played out in this figure in the front of the thigh, the quadricep, right there. I can drop a vertical here that encloses this back side. And this is how the artist is using the harmonic armature. Not only are they enclosing the figures, but they're using the diagonal lines of the armature to follow the angles in their figures. You have another one right here. It's a short one. It goes right down this thigh, right here. And then you have this vertical right here in the calf of this figure here. It's running behind this man. You can see how all this is coming together. Again, he's using the harmonic armature. He is placing his figures on many of the diagonal lines in this armature, and then he's creating divisions from those diagonal lines. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it, as always.